is Eric. I wanted to do a video today uh, in regards to uh, Greg Locke and his prayer for Israel. And uh, before I get into it, though, I just wanted to briefly say a few things. I will be doing a separate video on my thoughts on the matter. Obviously, a lot of people have been offended by the things that I've been posting in regards to the conflict between Israel and Palestine. And the issue with all that is, is I understand what's really going on. You see, I've been actually well aware of the whole Palestine-Israel conflict and actually studying it and looking into it and not just taking mainstream media's information from it or taking a, a right-wing Christian Zionist perspective on it but actually looking at it from real Palestinians and their own experiences and what they've had to share about it and also people who live over there. You see, I understand that those who are this, this political Zionism, this political Zionism is wicked, it's demonic. And look into Zionism and look into uh, who actually... Um, who actually are the so-called Israelites that are over there pushing this agenda? And you'll probably find out they don't actually come. There's an object on road ahead. You'll probably find out that they don't actually come from the line of Abraham. But, you know, that's another story for another day. I don't want to get too deep into that because obviously, if I do, I'll probably get censored. And I'll probably be labeled as an anti-Semite. However, however, once again... If we want to get into what uh, anti-Semitism is, well, you simply have to go and look and research and define what a Semite is, right? And we know, biblically speaking, Semites, they originate from the line of Shem. You know, when you had Shem, Japheth, and Ham, right? Noah's sons. Well, the line of Shem was not just only those that we would call today Israelites or Jews but it also includes Palestinians of today right it also includes uh, who else Assyrians people from Iraq because uh, Assyrians what's what's known as Iraq and Iran today and in that region and even part of Syria um, different parts of that region used to be Assyrian. And the Assyrians, they were completely, you know, I wouldn't say completely wiped out, but they their land, they don't have a land anymore. But if you know history and you know the culture, which I guarantee you Greg Locke does not know, you'll come to actually find out that most Assyrians are either Christian or like a Catholic or Orthodox type of Christian, which we know Catholics aren't Christian, but but you're not gonna find you you're not gonna find very many Assyrians who are actually Muslim. However, the thinking, the line of thinking and understanding that Greg Locke has, he would he would use that same that same mindset to the Assyrian people and was we'll, we'll wipe them all out. They're Assyrians. Now, there's actually Palestinian Christians over there, but we're going to get into it. My, my point is, my point is, is I'm going to share this throughout this video so you can see my heart and where I'm at in these matters. My point is, is Jesus calls us to love our neighbor. Number one. Jesus calls us to be there for the oppressed. And Greg Locke is going to make light of the oppression that the Palestinian people have been under for a good 70, 75 plus years had their land just completely taken from them. I said, well, that's Israel's land. Well, they're not Israel. And should I go to Isaiah, or, uh, Romans 9 and 6? Should I go to uh, Revelation 2 and 9 and Revelation 3 and 9? Right? Those that say they're Jews but are not but are actually the of the synagogue of Satan We'll get into that and I'm gonna get more into that in depth into that in the video that I do because again 
Not everyone who's saying they're a Jew, not everyone who's saying they're of Israel, or, or you know that they're in is you know an Israeli or that they're an Israelite or whatever, are of Israel. We'll get into that, but for now. We're gonna go ahead and let Greg Locke's video play. So sorry, guys, for the long introduction, but I had to, I had to share just a little bit of information and share just a little bit of my heart on where I'm at with all this, because I know the scripture says that two thirds are gonna be wiped out. Two thirds of those claiming to be Israel, one third are gonna be saved. That's the remnant. This is what the Word of God says. I know that in in Revelation we see the 144,000. Jewish male virgins. There it is. Right? I mean, it's... I take that literal when it says it's going to 144,000 Jewish male virgins. I take that literal. So my point is, though, as we know, there are going to be those Jews and those that are, you know, actual true Israelites getting saved. But we also know that you have to be born again. You don't get in by your culture, by your ethnicity, by your race alone. You have to be born again. It's that simple. Jesus told that to Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee Jew. He told a Jew, you have to be born again. So being a Jew is not a ticket to heaven. It's not. It's actually not in your favor. Because only one third are going to get saved. So anyways, I'm sorry for the long introduction, guys, but here's the video. And I'll add commentary as I go. Here's what we're going to do. Blow them shofars. Whoever got a shofar in the house, I don't even care if you're up here or not. Just blow them shofars. When they blow them shofars, I want you to lift the lid off this place with shout to the Lord. With praise to the Lord. I just want, as soon as you hear that shofar start to blowing, just I want you to shout the whole canvas off of this tent right now. Because I'm telling you, God's people are victorious. They will win. We will win. We stand with them with a watchman on the wall. We blow that shofar in victory now and then let's shout, shall we? Oh. Sorry for the quick interruption. Notice what they're flying in there. They're flying the star of Remphan. Amos 5.26, Acts 7.43. And this is what got, essentially, one of the main reasons Stephen was stoned. Because he called out. He called out those Pharisees. He called out those Jews for their star of Remphan. That hexagram right there. That's a satanic witchcraft symbol and it's interesting that Greg Locke who's all into knowing about witchcraft and Satanism and casting out devils this that and the other it's interesting that they would fly that cursed object that sigil that satanic symbol in their church so called now listen I want to I want to pray on the front end because I, I don't want to, I don't want things to bleed too much into the message. Because I'll get a little stirred up, and I, I got some other faith-filled things that I want to preach on. But I, I want to take a special time in our service uh, to pray for what is happening in Israel, in Jerusalem right now, and uh, th that's why we celebrate. We, we celebrate victory, not defeat. You understand? So let me let me say a, a couple of things. You, you can be standing; it'll be all right. I got to stand longer than anybody, so you'll be fine. So we'll get we'll get back into some offering and worship and all that, and then we'll let you sit down and we'll teach you a little bit from the Bible. But I want to say a few things, and so I I don't want it to uh, get mixed up in the message, okay? Because I'm gonna preach on something totally different. I don't want anybody in house or online to say, "Oh, I thought he wasn't gonna get political." This is not political statements that I'm about to make. Oh, it most definitely is political. 
Okay, these ain't Republican Democrat statements. These, these, are, these are Genesis chapter 12. I will bless them that bless Israel, and I will curse them that curse Israel. That's what this is. Ain't nothing political about what I'm about to say, but it's going to seem a little bit political, and that's okay. Because I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to say a couple of things that online is going to stir some people up, and in-house may, may weed out a few busybodies. Oh. Okay? So, if you don't stand with Israel, and you actually can sympathize and empathize and show compassion on the Palestinian people, you're a busybody. Oh, okay. You came to the wrong service today if you thought I was going to talk about these poor, beat-down, oppressed Palestinians. That's a bunch of nonsense that's been pushed by the media. Uh, that's a bunch of nonsense pushed by the media, Greg? No, it's their reality of life. Their reality of life. Over 800,000 were pushed out automatically in 1948 when... Israel got their so-called land back, right? Okay. What we would call them, uh, the, the Bible would call what you would consider Palestinians, which really is a made-up word. There's no such person. All the land belongs to Israel, and the Bible declares that. Hand me, my, my, hand me that Bible right there for a minute. Oh, if there's no such thing as a Palestinian then there's really no such thing as an American then, right? Is that a made-up word too? I mean, come on, Greg. Seriously. This is too easy. Somebody says, well, what's the, uh, what, what's the land deed to the nation of Israel? Right here is the deed to their land right here. Every centimeter that the sole of their feet walked on, this is the title deed to their land. Also, Greg, can't Philistines be saved? Or are you still living in the Old Testament? Are we not under the new covenant? Are we not under the blood of Jesus now? Isn't God willing that isn't God not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance? So now you have the same line of reasoning as the as the racist cult, the black Hebrew Israelites, who say that white people are Edomites and that there's no salvation for Edomites. So there's no salvation for Philistines. Even if they are Philistines, there's no salvation for them. Because I know of some Palestinian Christians, personally. The title deed to their land. As the rightful heirs to Abraham. God keeps his covenant with his people. Listen, if God doesn't keep his covenant with the nation of Israel, which he has for all these centuries, then what makes you think that he's going to keep his covenant with us? If he breaks it with one, he'll break it with another. But I'm going to tell you, Titus 1, 2 says God cannot lie. But does Israel keep their covenant with God? No, they don't. And this is why the Lord will use the enemies of Israel to chastise them, to whoop them. Did it with the Assyrians, did it with the Egyptians, did it with the Philistines, and, and so on and so forth. So you don't think he's doing that today with Hamas, even though we know, those of us who are in the know know who created Hamas, who created ISIS, who created Al-Qaeda, al qaeda We know. We know the real reason this is being done. This is being done so now Israel has a quote-unquote excuse to eliminate all the Palestinians in that land so they can have full 100% control of that land. Any nation that turns against the Jewish people is in the sewer dump of history. Any individual that turns against the Israeli nation, any church, any community, any group, any sect, any denomination that has ever come out against the nation of Israel is in the sewer dump of the Encyclopedia Britannica. That's the facts. The reason God has blessed America so greatly is not because we're so wonderful and so righteous. Good grief, we're unrighteous right now. It's because we've been an ally and a friend to the nation of Israel. That is why God has blessed us. So I don't care where you stand. In other words, yes, America has been funding the terroristic, uh, uh, the ter the terrorism of Israel. Yes, 
Thank you for admitting that, Greg. Yes. And you're going to admit that even you have been funding their terrorism. Politically, this is a prophetic issue, not a political issue. The moment this nation turns on that nation, we are sunk. We're done. No matter how prosperously blessed we have been, we're done. So I, I, I want to say a, a couple of things that are important. The news media would have you think that, you know, that Israel is so uh, oppressive and they're just a bunch of slave hoarders and drivers and they're beating down these poor, oppressed Palestinian they people are. who, again, by the way, the Bible would call them Philistines. You, you understand that fact? I'm not here to make friends with you today. I'm telling you, the Bible would call them Philistines. Uncircumcised Philistines is what the Bible would call them. So, listen. So, even if that's true, Greg, do they not deserve salvation? Are they not... I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Are they not open for salvation as well? Can they not be saved, Greg? Did not Jesus die for them as well, Greg? Hmm. Oh, because they're they're Philistines, right? So since they're Philistines, they just don't they don't deserve life. They're subhuman, right? Right, Greg? Are, are they subhuman? Is that what you're gonna say, Greg? Do you think they're subhuman? Israel, right now. Stop living in the old covenant, Greg. Is in the midst of an absolute massacre. Video footage cannot do it justice. And it's sad and it's unfortunate. But we're going to get into that as well. We're going to get into partly why it is happening. Because they serve and worship. You want to talk about, and all these Christians want to talk about, oh, well, they're, they're, they're Muslims. They worship a false god. So does Israel. Do you not know at the rave that Hamas went into... They were worshiping Buddha there. There was a huge Buddha statue on display behind the uh, the stage where the DJs are performing. A huge Buddha statue. Worshiping Buddha. Worshiping a false god. Now again, I'm not condoning violence, but what I'm saying is the Lord allows it. The Lord has allowed this because of their sin, because of their wickedness, because of their false worship and their false gods, rejecting the Messiah, spitting on the Messiah, spitting on Christians, hating Christians. I would love for Greg to go over to Israel and preach Jesus Christ over in Israel and see how well those people flying that hexagram, see how well they take to him. The media itself will not do it justice. If it wasn't for, no matter what you think about him politically, if it wasn't for uh, Elon Musk allowing videos to actually surface on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, then most of the world would not know just how vicious and, and bloodthirsty it really is. I mean, Benjamin Netanyahu, now look, I know in the past he's sold out on a few things, I get it. But... He has sworn that not only will Israel win, but they will decimate the enemy. Okay, look, this is war. This ain't Sunday school. You understand that? So I'm just going to give you a couple of my observations. And then I'm gonna just, we're going to have a, a real special time of prayer for the nation of Israel. Okay. The Gaza Strip, which has now been cut off by Israel, and rightly so. They should have cut them off a long time ago. Oh, wow. okay. now, I don't care how insensitive you think I am to that. There's six doors in this church. You can leave anytime you want to. They've cut them off, you know, electricity. They've cut off their water. They, 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 they should have. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not for hurting anyone that's innocent, but anybody that supports terrorism is not innocent, which has now been cut off Sorry, guys. by Israel, and rightly so. They should have cut them off a long time ago. I don't care how insensitive you think I am to that. There's six doors in this church. You can leave anytime you want to. They've cut them off, you know, electricity. They've cut off their water. They, 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 they should have. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not for hurting anyone that's innocent. But anybody that supports terrorism is not innocent. Stand down. 
Israel should make the Gaza Strip a parking lot by this time next week. Destroy the whole thing. And anybody that's going to support this Hamas nonsense. Listen, Joe Biden ought to be tried for treason. You understand that? Now, I get it, I get it, I get it. He, Obama's the real president behind him anyhow, and so he's the one that ought to be tried for treason. Almost said everybody all right, but I'm not really worried about it. I know who will be all right, Israel, because God said no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. No nation is going to be able to stop what God's doing in Israel. Not China, not North Korea, not Hamas, not Iran, not Iraq, none of them. Russia, not a one of them. They're small, but take... Interesting he mentioned Iraq. Should we talk about the Iraq war? Take exit 115 for Georgia 20. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys, for the GPS. I I can't turn. It's not allowing me to shut the volume down. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to turn the volume down on my GPS so my GPS stops interrupting, but I apologize, so please bear with me. Please bear with me if you can. Take and, exit 115, then keep left. And bear with my GPS as well. I appreciate you guys bearing with me and bearing with my GPS. Keep left. <laughs> I accidentally took a wrong... You wouldn't be hearing it right now, but I accidentally... Uh, Got up on the wrong exit, so that's all good. Anyways, anyways, so should we talk about the million people, and, and in particular, uh, civilians and women and children who were right. murdered in Iraq? And see, this is the thing with Greg. This is the same mindset. Greg Locke was probably, and I don't know for a fact, but I could see Greg Locke, how he's acting right here. I could see Greg Locke being completely gung-ho and being, you know, just straight up wanting to go into Iraq and decimate the people of Iraq. Not knowing that there are many Christians in Iraq, as there are Christians in Palestine as well, but there are there were many Christians in Iraq who were killed. Who were killed. Do you think when they went in there. Georgia 20 West for two miles. Do you think that the United States military was going in there and before they were killing innocent Iraqis, asking them if they were Christian or not, or if they were Muslim? Definitely not. They definitely did not do that. But you see, this 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 mindset, this attitude that Greg Locke is having is just hey. You know, not a big deal. Just go in there, wipe them all out, right? In two miles, turn right onto the I-985 north ramp to Gainesville. Just wipe them all out. And, and, and it's really... It's really quite sad that this is the attitude Greg Locke is having. Which, but it's not surprising. Let me, let me, let me, let me be honest with you. It's not surprising, but it is saddening. It is heartbreaking because, again, innocent people, innocent people, innocent people, innocent people, women. Make a U-turn at Mall of Georgia Boulevard. Women, children, women and children, and again, I'm not. Continue on Georgia 20 East for half a mile. I'm not I'm not sitting here saying that there's not wicked people over there, that there's not that Hamas, I'm not defending Hamas, nor have I ever defended Hamas, nor have I ever defended In a quarter mile, turn left. Nor have I ever defended uh, uh, ISIS or Al Qaeda or any any uh, any group like that. I don't defend terrorism. 
But here's the hypocrisy. If you're going to call out the terrorism... The next left? Then use any lane to turn if left you're going to call out the terrorism of Islam, if you're going to call out the terrorism of Hamas and Al-Qaeda and the Taliban and um, ISIS and, and, and so on and so forth. Use any lane to turn left at Brand Smart Way. If you're going to... destination will be on the right. If you're going to call out... If you're going to call out their terrorism, well, then you also have to call out the terrorism, number one, of your own country. You have to call out the terrorism of America. You have to call out the terrorism that they have been doing. Again, going into Iraq, should I play the video of George Bush mocking and joking about, oh, any, any weapons of mass destruction over here? Nope, none over here, none over there. Like, see, he doesn't understand. Greg Locke and his followers, I can tell they're simple-minded. And when I say simple-minded, I don't mean simple concerning evil or, or you know, the simplicity of the gospel. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking like they're simpletons. They're NPCs. They're, oh, yeah, MAGA, MAGA, Trump, Trump. They're that kind of mindset. Some people could say white trash. Whatever you want to refer to it as, that's the kind of mentality that these people have. I mean, it's, it's obvious. They're cheering this on. They're cheering on going in there and just wiping out the people in the Gaza Strip. It's demonic. It's wicked. Let me... I, I went on a tangent. Let me let this play. Sorry, guys. ...is in God's prophetic spectrum and timeline. So I, I hope Netanyahu's a leader and he just mows the whole thing down by this time next week. Let's say that again. All potatoes in God's prophetic spectrum and timeline. So I, I hope Netanyahu's a leader and he just mows the whole thing down by this time next week. Amen. Amen, you hear that? He said, well, you know, what are you going to do with all those people? You know what's interesting? Did you know that Egypt uh -oh, closed yeah. their borders to anybody coming out of Gaza? They closed their borders a while back to the Palestinians. See, here's what CNN and people want you to believe. Oh, those poor, oppressed Palestinians. Egypt flooded their escape tunnels and buried... They closed their borders a while back to the Palestinians. See, here's what CNN and people want you to believe. Oh, those poor, oppressed Palestinians. Egypt flooded their escape tunnels and barricaded their walls so that the Palestinians cannot even come into Egypt. You know why? Not even Egypt wants terrorists in their town. You understand that? Yeah, so now you're equating to all people of Palestine as being terrorists. Again, there's Palestinian Christians. There's Palestinian Christians there. So they're terrorists? I mean, <laughs> does this idiot not realize what he's saying? Does he not realizing he's heaping up condemnation on himself? Because this is not loving your neighbor. This is not. This is not the love of Christ. This is not a, a, a rant, a message that Jesus is going to approve of. Jesus, when he returns, he's going to destroy his enemies. Most definitely. That's without a doubt. Jesus will destroy his enemies. But this, this is demonic. This is straight up demonic right here, friends. What Greg Locke is spewing is hatred. This is not loving your neighbor. It's not. Many of these people, these women and children, they they have no, they have, I mean, could you imagine, could you imagine seriously saying this to little children? Well, let's just say that. Uh, imagine saying this to little children. Well, you're a Philistine, so who cares about you? Who cares about you? And and even in, 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 the, in the Word of God, over and over again, it talks about caring for the widows and caring for the little children. King James Bible, James 127, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Being there for the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. This guy is making light of the affliction they're suffering. All right, guys, but I'm going to let Greg... Oh, sorry. Yes, ma'am. All right. Sorry, guys. I've been going off on tangents, but we'll get more into that as well. Um, let's let this lunatic continue. Seems like 
Egypt's got more sense than America does. If you think all this, I ain't starting to preach yet, but I'm about to talk for a minute, okay? If you think all this open border stuff is not an opportunity for a bunch of Hamas sleeper cells to come into this nation right now and start killing innocent men, women, and children, you have lost your mind. I'm sick of all these Christians saying we ought to have peace with Islam. Islam is a satanic death cult and they would cut your head off before I said amen in this sermon if they had a chance to. Stop. And I agree with that. Islam is a satanic death cult. So I agree. Islam is a satanic death cult. But at the same time, most professing Muslims are again just like Christians. They're lukewarm. They're lukewarm and they don't They don't actually practice their faith. to the fullest, just like most Christians. In 300 feet, turn left. Don't actually Take practice the their left, faith. Then turn left. Don't actually practice their faith to the fullest. So, yeah, at its core, Islam is a satanic death cult. And I do believe, yes, that because of these open borders, there probably are. There probably are. Terrorists implanted feet, in this right country, Smart and there already was before that. You, you already know there was before turn that. But again, Smart way. if we want to talk about terrorism, you have to look within your own Keep first. Right, then slide right onto Georgia Twenty West. This is why, and people don't like that I do this, but this is why I usually talk more about false teachers, and I talk more about slide the right church. Georgia Twenty West. Sorry, guys. That I talk more about the church and false teachers. And I do Continue other religions. Georgia, 20 West for three miles. Because the word of God tells us that judgment must begin in the house of the Lord first. Again, you're you're always all these people like like your Greg Locks and others, they always want to judge without before they judge within. And we're supposed to judge within before we judge without. That's just like again as a believer, if your house is out of order, you have no business to speak about anybody else's house if your house is out of order. You have no business to go out in the streets and worry about drag queens and worry about parents taking their children to go see drag queens if you're allowing your children to go out in the streets and, and get knocked up and, and to fornicate and, and these kind of things. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's It's hypocrisy. And that's exactly what this is. You're, you're, you're calling out, you're calling out, oh, the Palestinians. You're calling out Hamas. You're calling out Islam. But you don't even call, you're, you're, I mean, you, you barely call out. You only just really started doing it recently. The, the hypocrisy in, in the church and the hypocrisy in America itself. And being a terroristic nation. The biggest terroristic nation is America. Let's keep that 100%. Let's keep that 100%, Greg. That is the biggest... America and Israel are the two biggest terrorist states there are. Anyways, I digress. All this nonsense. There's nothing peaceful about Islam. The Muslim religion hates Jewish people to the core of who they are. Why don't you talk about who created Islam? Where Islam originates from. Why don't you talk about that, Greg? And then Joe Biden sends Iran $6 billion. Guess who's funding Hamas? Iran. Ultimately, Obama. No, ultimately, the United States. And yourself, as you're going to admit here in a little bit. Well, you're actually, I'm sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. You're funding the terrorism of Israel. And so now they're taking our money and killing God's people with it. Uh, sorry, Greg. God's people are those that do the will of the Father. Jesus said, who are my brother and my sister and my mother, but those that do the will of the Father. 
the vast majority of the Jews over there are not doing God's will. They don't worship God. They worship a false God. They worship their Talmudic God. Should, should we go into the Talmud and see what they actually believe, Greg? Would you really? Why don't you get into that? Why don't you do that, Greg? Why don't you? Why don't you expose the, Tal, the Talmudic Jews or the Kabbalah Jews? All the wicked witchcraft and pedophilia that they're involved with. Look at Hollywood. Look at the music industry. Look at the sports industry. Who runs all of that? As I have right in front of me right now, a person that has a Ukraine logo on their vehicle and then a sticker that says Ukraine strong. See? Mind, mind programming. Mind control. It's manipulation. The same thing they're doing with Israel. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of wicked people in Palestine as well. And they need to repent and be born again. But this is not a message that's promoting that. Greg is promoting wiping them out. Let me let it play, though. I'm sorry, guys. Pastors all over America be like, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to talk about the, the war in Israel because, you know, it's just, that's just a little bit too political. I hope you lose your job before nightfall. We've never seen anything like this. Ever. Israel's never seen anything like this. These people are bloodthirsty mongrels. I mean, they're like walking in four-way stops, pulling people out of their cars, cutting their throats, and letting the car just keep... Yeah, Hamas, but not all Palestinians. You're just, you're just painting all of the Palestinian people with a broad brush. All Palestinians are like this. No, they're not. No, they're not. Knock it off, Greg, you lying devil. Rolling through the intersection. How many girls do we have in this room that are 15 to 25? Stick your hand up high in the air right now. If you're 15 to 25, hold your hand up very, very high right now. All over the room. 15 to 25. Look at them. You can put your hands down. They would rape and brutally murder every single one of them. And they're doing it on video footage. And somehow I'm the bad guy for talking about it on Sunday morning. <laughs> Raping them. Little bitty kids, tiny children, in cages. It's demonic. Like animals. In cages. This very second. I'm like, well, you know, it's just a little bit too uncomfortable to talk about. It's too uncomfortable not to talk about. This is demonic. So thank God for the... And it's also demonic what the IDF, what Israel, what the Mossad, what they've been doing to the people of Palestine for decades now. In a quarter mile, merge onto I-985 North. You can look at the map and see from 1948 until now how it was predominantly Palestine then and now it's a small little area. It's the Gaza Strip and one other little small area where the Palestinian people live. And the rest is Israel. The rest is Israel. But they're treating it like, oh, the Palestinians are the bullies. Really? They don't have the funding. They shut off the power and the water to the Palestinian people. They shut this off. And this is the kind of heart you have? Again, even if they're wrong. Don't, aren't we supposed to love our enemies? Aren't we supposed to pray for them? This is what Jesus taught. This is not This is not, This is is not. not Christ-like at all. But you're not a Christian. You're not born again, Greg. You're a lost devil. Iron Dome shooting those thousands of rockets out. These people swooping down like a, a you know, like paratroopers. Shocking people, just shooting people, killing people, looting. They, they have kidnapped hundreds of people. They have brutally murdered hundreds, if not thousands of people. Thousands of people are missing. In, in God's capital. And this has been happening to Palestinians. Since 1948. Since 1948, Greg, this has been happening to Palestinians. 
and you barely hear a peep about it from any Christians. Again, I'm not condoning what Hamas has done, but I also know why this is being done. I know who's funding them, essentially. It's America. It's Israel. It's being done intentionally to wipe them out. Because Hamas don't care about the Palestinian people either. They don't. They're, they're useful idiots. They're useful tools. In God's capital. All that land belongs to Israel. Every bit of it. So there's no such thing as these beat down, oppressed Palestinians. All the videos of them holding up weapons. Guess who? In God's capital. All that land belongs to Israel. Every bit of it. So there's no such thing as these beat down, oppressed Palestinians. All the videos of them holding up weapons. Guess who gave them to them? Every bit of it. So there's no such thing as these beat down, oppressed Palestinians. All the videos of them holding up weapons. Guess who gave them to them? We did. Well, not us. But this buckwild, demonized government administration that we got gave them to them. So there's no such thing as beat down and oppressed Palestinians. I'm sorry, Greg. But if there was... Palestine's what, about 2 million people, roughly? If what you're saying is true, if what you're saying is true, let me, let me actually look up the actual population today. Almost 5 million. Almost 5 million is the population, right? So if what you're saying is true, there's no such thing. So you're broad brushing a population of almost 5 million people. Israel has a population of almost 10 million. So double in size. But if what you're saying, and, and see, land-wise, Israel owns most of the land. They have most of the land. So now you're not only are you talking about it 10 million to 5 million, but you're talking about 10 million spread out and 5 million in small congested areas. So you're going to tell me they're not oppressed? I mean, this is some like slave master mentality, some KKK, and I'm not trying to sound like some left wing whatever, but the reality is what it is. This is what he's saying out of his own mouth. And unfortunately, this type of rhetoric that he is spewing is going to give left-wing, liberal, democratic-type people all this firepower. Uh, see, see, this is Christian. He's going to say, this is what represents Christ. This is what represents Christians right here. This is what... They're, they're going to use this. I already know it. I already know the one guy who always makes videos about Greg Locke. He probably already has, or he's going to in the next couple of days. He'll make a video about this. Many other, many other leftists, atheists, etc., are going to make videos about Greg Locke spewing this nonsense. And I'm here to tell you today: this does not represent a Christian. This does not represent the heart of Christ. He is not born again. He's a fake Christian. He's a lost devil on his way to hell, and he's leading his multitude of followers with him. The same demonic rhetoric. It's sad. Now listen, here's what I think. I told my wife this last night. This will be the most controversial thing I say, but I'll be all right. I'll preach in a minute. Somebody, I hope, get this message to Benjamin Netanyahu. That he ought to take care of the rest of them yahoos. Oh, do that. Now I'm going to tell you what would fix it right now. By the way, it'd fix it. It would help usher in what... Somebody, I hope, get this message to Benjamin Netanyahu. That he ought to take care of the rest of them yahoos. And I'm going to tell you what would fix it right now. By the way, it'd fix it. It would help usher in what we're wanting so bad. Huh? While they're mowing down the Gaza Strip. And letting them terrorists know exactly what we do with terrorists, which is not compromise or negotiate. What they ought to do is evacuate up there on the hill and get a great big missile and blow that wicked Dome of the Rock plumb off of the spot where it's standing right now 
so we can get that third temple rebuilt and usher in the coming of Jesus. And there it is, folks. There it is. He wants to get the third temple built so we can usher in the coming of Jesus. Now, does he not realize that in bringing about the third temple, you're going to bring in their Messiah, who is the Antichrist? And this is where Greg Locke is leading all you people who follow him, leading you to the Antichrist. This is New Apostolic Reformation, Seven Mountain Mandate garbage that he's spewing. We're not ushering in the return of Christ, but this is what the NAR spews. The NAR spews that we're going to usher in the return of Christ. That we're funding the return of Christ. I got a video, a couple videos on my channel about it where this NAR guy did that. He said that at this conference. That they're going to usher in the return of Christ. That they're going to fund and finance the return of Christ. They believe they're going to do this. This is what the this is where this is all heading, friends. This is where this is all heading. That's that's the whole premise behind what's going on over there. They have to wipe out that dome, right? Or, the, or I should say, they're going to wipe out that dome in hopes to jump off a holy war. So then that way, the man of sin can come on the scene and bring peace. He can come and bring peace, right? Make the little peace agreement and start making everybody take the mark. We've seen Israel was pretty draconian. They were pretty insane with everything going on during the CV-19 days and getting the vax, uh, la, 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 getting the shot, you know, getting the, getting the jib jabber jibber jabber 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 Got to be careful what I say. It's <laughs> a shame. But seriously, hey, you don't, you can't buy or sell unless you got your proof of this and that, right? That's where this is all heading. And people like this, Greg Locke, this Christian Zionism, that Zionism mentality, it's all about that. It's all about that, friends. This is not, <laughs> this is not what you people think it is. Their Messiah that's coming is not our Messiah. The Messiah has already come. When Jesus comes again, he's coming to destroy his enemies. He's coming to gather, gather his saints and destroy his enemies. So Greg Locke and people like him with this mentality, they're leading you and pointing you to the Antichrist and essentially to worship the Antichrist and to take the mark of the beast. That's where all this Christian Zionism is heading. That's why I do not stand with Israel. That's why I said if you stand with Israel, you will fall for the Antichrist. Off of the spot where it's... What they ought to do is evacuate up there on the hill and get a great big missile and blow that wicked dome of the rock plumb off of the spot where Whoa. it's standing right now so we can get that third temple rebuilt and usher in the coming of Jesus. Tear down that big demonic monstrosity that shouldn't even be there. Blow the whole thing to kingdom come. Rebuild that third temple and we'll zip up out of here in the glory land. Amen. Yes, I said it. Yes, Twitter, enjoy yourself. They ought to blow the whole thing up. Bring the whole thing down. Evacuate it out. Tell them, you got 48 hours to get out. We're going to blow it up. Let them all get out. And if they decide to go down with it, then they decide to go down with it. I'm done. Evacuate it out. Tell them, you got 48 hours to get out. We're going to blow it up. Let them all get out. And if they decide to go down with it, then they decide to go down with it. Whole thing down. Evacuate it out. Tell them, you got 48 hours to get out. We're going to blow it up. Let them all get out. And if they decide to go down with it, then they decide to go down with it. I'm 
done with it. I ain't playing these games. We'll step. And go where, Greg? Go where? Are you going to let them come to America? Are you going to open the door for them to come to America? Because where are between both spots where, where the Palestinians are at over there? Five million people, roughly. Where do you expect these five million people to go? I mean, see how hypocritical it is? You say, oh, they can't go to Egypt because of how wicked they are. Well, then where, the, where should they go? Where are they going to go, Greg? How would you like it, Greg, if someone said, hey, we should go to Global Vision Bible Church. Give them 48 hours to evacuate uh, uh, Mount Juliet. Give them 48 hours to evacuate Tennessee. And then blow it up if they don't leave, regardless if they left or not. How would you feel about that, Greg? How would you feel about having white phosphorus dropped all over Mount Juliet, all over Global, Vi Bi Global Vision miles, Bible Church? For US How would you feel about that, Greg? Doesn't sound like you're really loving your enemy a whole lot. Doesn't sound like you're loving your neighbor a whole lot. Pump security around here all week. We get our own ballistic. And if they decide to go down with it, then they decide to go down with it. I'm done with it. I ain't playing these games. We'll step up security around here all week. We get our own ballistic missile system. Praise God. We got our own Iron Dome. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. God will protect us. We're standing with the nation of Israel. We're honoring the nation of Israel. We're standing with their army. We're standing with their leadership. We're standing with their people. Okay. That video. You're standing with the Antichrist. That's who you're standing with. You're going to stand with the Antichrist. You know, that woman that survived the Holocaust in a wheelchair, they snatched her up. Kidnapped a Holocaust survivor. Help me, Holy Ghost. She survived the worst atrocity that the Jewish people have ever experienced. Now he's going to pull on your heartstrings. Now he's going to pull on your heartstrings. Only to be kidnapped by somebody with American dollars in their pocket. From a corrupt government. They should have been smoked out months ago when they stole the election to begin with. Yes, I said it. There are consequences to thievery. There are consequences to evil. There are consequences to stolen elections. There are consequences to stolen land as well, Greg. You forget. You forget. Because of Israel's sin, this is why they got dispersed. You forget about that. You're not mentioning any of that. This is all emotional appeal. This is this is all political, Greg. You can say you're not being political. No, it is. Because you're not speaking at all Continue biblically. On US 129 South for one mile. You're not speaking at all biblically as to why this has happened to Israel. You say that's not that's not their land. Really? Well, God allowed them to have that land. God allowed them to have that land because of Israel's sin. And a lot of actually, and actually a lot of people, a lot of uh, Israelis, whatever you want to call them, Israelites, because most of them aren't really actual Israelites. Again, they're the synagogue of Satan. They're Ashkenazis. They're Kazarians and Ashkenazis over there. Yeah, listen to that word very carefully. Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi. <clears throat> a lot of Ashkenazis over there. So think about that, Gregory. There's a lot of Ashkenazis over there. They're not from the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are imposters. They are of the synagogue of Satan. 
They claim they're Jews, but they're not, Jesus said. Revelation 2 9. Revelation 3 9. What do we do about those scriptures? Do we believe those scriptures? Do we believe what they say? Or don't we? I tend to want to believe what the Word of God says. What do you do, Greg? And all you Zionist Christians? What do you do with Romans 9 and 6? But let me just read it. I'll read it in context. Let me go to let me go to Romans 9 in context, right? Paul says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. For my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God bless forever amen not as though the word of God hath taken none effect for they are not all Israel which are of Israel for they are not all Israel which are of Israel for they are not all Israel which are of Israel neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Do you hear that? The children of the flesh are not the children of God. They have to be born again. And this is not replacement theology. The re replacement theology is wicked too. There are those, yes, there are Jews. There are Israelites who will be true, genuine Israelites. But guess what? To be an Israelite, you have to be born again. It's that simple. You have to be born again. In this quote unquote, as, as these dispensationalists like to say, in this dispensation, you have to be an Israelite to be, you have to be born again to be an Israelite. So there are physical by flesh Israelites who will become born again. And there are physical by flesh Israelites who are again of Israel, but they're not Israel. So when it says, and they like, and some will like to use the scripture, well, all of Israel is going to be saved. Yes, this is why it's prefaced back here in Romans nine. Those that are Israel are those that have their hearts circumcised. It's a circumcision of the heart. Two thirds of the of those over there are not going to have their hearts circumcised. Two thirds of those throughout the rest of the world are not going to have their hearts circumcised. One third, yes. Two thirds, no. That's Bible. That's Zechariah 13, 7 through 9. Consequences to it. And we're living out the consequences right now. So as far as I'm concerned, ain't none of that stuff political. All of it's demonic. It's all based on a principality. So I'm just trying to get you to understand. And I want these young people to understand. If you will, if you will serve Jesus, but you will honor the people that God honors, He will honor you in your life. God has honored our church. We have sown so much money through various groups and ministries and churches and organizations and missionaries and evangelists and pastors into the nation of Israel. No wonder God's blessed our church so much. And we're going to keep on doing it. 
My family has personally sown into the nation of Israel. God's blessed us because of it. Even when we don't take offerings for the nation of Israel, every single month on the second of the month, our church automatically has subtracted, without even thinking, without, without, even, without even sleeping on it, without even you know, having to, 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 to know that it's coming out. Every single month, even without taking any offerings whatsoever, uh, the, the, the fellowship of, of Jewish people that are based out of uh, Kentucky that work with the military, work with Holocaust survivors, work with widows and orphans and, and people all throughout the Jerusalem area. Every single month on the second, $5,000, boom, automatically comes out of the Global Vision Bible Church account and goes straight to Israel. It's the first of the month. It's, we tithe to God's people literally every single month in this church. No New Testament commandment for tithing. So I know that's that's a lot of supercharged stuff, but I mean they're they're literally having their throats cut right now as we worship. They're everywhere. They're gonna win. Israel's gonna win. Hamas is gonna be stamped out. And they're gonna go slither into some caves like cockroaches. And they're gonna find them. And they're going to blow the caves up and kill the cockroaches. And it doesn't bother me to say that. There is only one response to that level of terrorism. And it's not sweetness. Don't think that the gospel's not been shared. The love of God's not been propagated. Stop all this. Stop all this. It hasn't. What are you talking about? There was no love of God in that rant you just did. Definitely not. No love of God, man. No love of God. No love of God. Islam hates Christianity. Hates Israel. And now the people that we gave money to weeks and weeks ago are standing on parliament floors like as of yesterday shouting death to America, death to America, death to America. Now listen, let me tell you something. All you parents that have your kids in these liberalized drag queen reading public schools. No wonder your children are coming out indoctrinated against Christianity and sympathetic towards Islam. No wonder. Get them out of that mess. Get them out of that mess. There are more terror sales in this nation than probably any nation on the planet. And everybody wants to give us a bum rap for, for exposing that. It's not a conspiracy theory. When it comes to your town, you'll change your tune. When it comes to our town, we'll change our tune. They're just looking for an opportunity. And now they found it. Now they found it. So that's a long way around the barn. But I can promise you, as long as I've got this microphone in my hand, this church is going to hold hands with the nation of Israel. <laughs> and, and he said, as long as he's got this microphone in his hand, he's going to hold hands with Israel. Well, let's see what the word of God has to say about that. And I'm going to and I'm going to finish with this. Proverbs 16 and 5. Everyone that is proud, everyone that is proud in heart and is an abomination to the Lord, though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Proverbs 16 and 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. I'm going to end with this. I had a dream a few nights ago where Greg and I 
we're actually going to go to the Reawaken America tour, which is taking place in Miami tomorrow and Saturday. Me and Greg Locke, we're going to go to that together. Now, he is still slated to be there. I don't know if he is for sure going to be there or not, but he's slated to be there, even though he said he wasn't like doing stuff like that no more, but clearly he's a liar. And, and that's a whole other can of worms we'll get into with all this NAR stuff he's spewing and what's actually coming. Greg Locke is pushing for the coming of the Antichrist. And that's where he's leading people. That's where the whole Reawaken America tour is pushing people and leading people towards the coming of the Antichrist. Anyway, with that being said, in this dream I had, Greg Locke was on stage. This was only a few days ago I had this dream. Greg Locke was on stage. And he was up there preaching. And all of a sudden, he started having like an anxiety attack. And he started getting really dizzy. And I've, I've experienced this before where this has happened to me um, and, and, and in different ways. And then I, I ended up like blacking out and falling out, right? So Greg Locke started having an anxiety attack up on stage while he's preaching. And then he started getting really dizzy and stumbling around and then he uh blacked out kind of like went through like a curtain kind of blacked out and then crashed through the stage he crashed through the stage and then because of this happening it disallowed him from being able to go to the reawake in america tour and preach um and whatever he planned on doing there um so i'm, I'm sharing that to share um I do believe, as, as the scripture just says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Um, and, and, you know, what the scripture said in Proverbs 16, 5 about the proud is an abomination to God. You know, and though the hand join the hand, they will not go unpunished, right? Greg Locke is not going to go unpunished for what he's doing. Greg Locke has a fall coming. His fall is coming very soon. And I think this video right here Aside from his already proud and doubling down on his adultery and all the stuff he entered into with the deliverance and all that yoking up with witches and warlocks, where's his discernment? Where's your discernment? Where is your discernment, Greg? Yoking up with all these people. Greg Locke's fall is coming. And if he continues to double down on his sin and his pride and his arrogancy, it's going to be a hard fall. It's not going to be soft. I mean, in my dream, he literally busts through a wooden floor. A wooden floor. He busts through it. It wasn't a th it wasn't thin wood either, mind you. I mean, this was probably, you know, at least, I don't know, at least an inch, inch and a half, maybe almost two inches. Well, probably about at least, an, probably, yeah, at least an inch and a half thick, if not thicker wood bust right through it fell right through it so um yeah i mean i don't know for sure if the, the dream was of the lord or not i prayed about it and i'll continue to pray about it um but i do get a lot of spiritual dreams and that was very like heavy and then literally this happens now i don't know which happened first this or the dream i'm bad i'm not sure of um regardless of that though because I didn't, I, this is to, right now, like today, is my first time actually viewing this video. So I had the dream before I viewed the, this video, before I even knew he did this. So Greg Locke's fall is coming. I believe that. Uh, when, I don't know. It could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen Saturday. I don't know. It could happen Sunday. It could happen a year from now. I don't know. But Greg's, Greg Locke's fall is definitely coming. And since he's doubling down on this witchcraft, supporting Israel and standing with Israel and wanting to uh, build the third temple and all of that, he is leading people to the Antichrist. He's leading people to the mark of the beast. And whether you believe it or not, that's on you. But discerning of spirits and the gift of discernment is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And I know the Lord has blessed me with this. I know the Lord has blessed me as being, you could say, I don't want to say I'm Prophet Eric, but the Lord has definitely gifted me, I believe, 
with a prophetic voice um, to preach hard messages, to preach that which is not true. And ultimately, uh, even with Greg, for instance, he's doing uh, exactly... I don't want to say exactly what Jonah did, but Greg is is doing similar to what Jonah did, and Jonah wanted to wipe the people. He got he didn't he wanted the people of Nineveh to be wiped out. That's what that's what Jonah wanted. Jonah wanted the people of Nineveh to be wiped out. So what happened? He didn't want to go preach the message. He got swallowed up by the fish. And even after that, he still kind of had an attitude about it. The Lord had to deal with Jonah. You know, I don't believe Greg Locke is a Jonah-like figure, however. I believe Greg Locke is a lost devil on his way to hell. But, you know, for instance... Scripture says at the very end of Jonah, and should not I spare Nineveh, that great city wherein are most than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. Interesting that he ended the book of Jonah with a question. He ended it with a question. Should not God spare the Palestinian people who you claim are Philistines, Greg? Should he not spare them? Isn't that the heart of Jesus? Think about that. Think about that. God spared the people of Nineveh. The heart of Christ is we should want God to spare the people of Israel and the people of Palestine. That is the heart that we should have. that they are able to see another day so that way they can repent. And I hope and pray that even what's going on over there, this judgment that is on Israel, and judgment's coming to America too, Greg. Because you forget that that Tel Aviv, Israel, has the largest, if not one of the largest, if not the largest gay pride festival in the world. You don't think judgment is on them? Should I remind you who was behind 9-11? Should we, should we remind you of that, Greg? Blaming it on blaming it on Iraq and Afghanistan and, and, and Osama bin Laden, right? Should we not remind you who was really behind 9-11, Greg? Should we not remind you, Greg, how they uh, let all the uh, Jewish people know to not be in the towers that day ahead of time? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, man. You can't make this stuff up. Anyways, though, so... <laughs> we should have the heart of the Lord. The heart of the Lord is that He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's the heart of the Lord. So anyways, guys, um, that's it for now on this video. Like I said, I will do, Lord willing, a separate video fully explaining my position with Israel, with this conflict with Palestine, and um, why I'm posting what I'm posting. The reason I'm posting what I'm posting, and I'll, I'll share some of that now, is to get people out of this left-right paradigm, to get people out of this NPC type of mentality and thinking, because that's what's... Some people are just like, oh, I stand with Israel. Don't even think... They just automatically just, oh, I'm just Israel, Israel, Israel. You're standing with devils. The word of God says that we're not to stand in the way of sinners. You're standing with sinners. You're standing with people who hate your God by saying that. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Anyways, guys, God bless you. I love you. And um, again, keep keep everyone in prayer who's going through this. Pray that souls will be saved. Pray that souls will be saved. Because when all the smoke clears from this, you know, the the the, the, the Israelis over there, the Jewish people, 
they'll still have water and power and education and these kind of things. But the people of Palestine who are being wiped out, that's going to be a different story. They're going to be displaced and even more Palestinians are going to be driven out from their land and they're not going to have anywhere to go. Think about that. In Jesus' name, amen.